Hey everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about the best and worst things about Refine Edge. Some of the stuff I love about it, some of the stuff I hate about it, and just generally how to use it. Now Refine Edge is something that's going to allow you to make complex selections with relative ease in Photoshop, but it's also kind of hit or miss. So we've got the good and we've got the bad. Now before we dive into it, I just want to remind you guys I'm selling a course on how to retouch images over on my website, 27 bucks. There's a link here on the uh, the screen if you want to go check it out, pick up a copy. It just helps support the site. It'd be super cool if you pick it up. If not, I love you all the same, and I'm going to keep making tutorials anyway. Let's talk about Refine Edge. Now, over here on the Channels panel, I'm going to Command or Control click this thumbnail to load a quick selection here that I made of this girl. And you, when you begin using Refine Edge, you just want to grab something like the, uh, the Quick Selection tool and go ahead and make a selection of whatever it is you'd like to select. I also should say, this is a particularly difficult image to extract from this background because it's not in focus. I mean, it's, her eyes are in focus, but by the time you get to her shoulders, you can see it's completely blurry uh, and the edges of her hair, the little fringes, they're all blurry. Very, very, very difficult to extract because there's so much of that white background color that's going to want to come with the hair that it just makes it nearly impossible to get a great selection. But let's see what Refine Edge can do. So we have our selection. We go select Refine Edge. Now here in Refine Edge, there's a couple things I want to point out. You can choose your view mode. I typically like to work with overlay, but we will be switching to probably on black and on white and maybe on layers. just shows it over this kind of transparent background. Uh, overlay is just in my mind very nice. You can kind of get a, a, a very quick look at what you're doing and then over black, especially with an image like this, it's very light. We're going to really get to see our edge well. Note the hotkeys, V, B, things like that. You can just quickly switch between them while you're working. Um, also show original. That's just going to show our original uh, selection edge. Sometimes it's nice to be able to get back if I just you know crank the smart radius way up and then feather the living daylights out of the edge of my selection. You can see it just really destroys our selection essentially. But if I hit the letter P, I can see, oh, there was a selection we brought in, and then hit P again to get back to my current selection. Now, if you've destroyed a selection like this and you just want to restart in the Refine Edge dialog box, hold down your Alter Option key, and the Cancel button turns into a Reset button, and everything goes back to the way it was. We also have the ability to zoom. You can choose the tool. You can choose Command or Control and the plus minus keys, and the hand tool to navigate around your image, or you can simply hold down the space bar, and it turns into the hand tool, and you can navigate around that way as well. We've got edge detection here. More importantly, we just have to get kind of that the view user interface junk out of the way. We've got edge detection. Edge detection, we almost always turn on. It's kind of the heart and soul of Refine Edge. It is, it's refining the edge, right? It's going to help detect the edge and refine the selection based upon the detection. Now, the detection takes place over the course of a set pixel radius. What is this radius? Well, if the radius is like 35 or 40 pixels, Photoshop is going to go 40 pixels to either side of the our selection edge. And you can see that it sort of expanded and contracted our selection based upon that. Now we actually need to take this a bit further than just 40 pixels. So let's try maybe, I don't know, 100, 115 pixels. I don't know, something 128. Let's just go with 128. And you can see it really expands this stuff out to where we need it to be. Um, now, if you have a selection and you really need to get in there and fine tune it even more than that, maybe some parts of your selection need to be very wide, but some need to be very narrow, you have the Refine Radius Brush Tool here. And this tool, well, it's just a brush. You paint over what you know to be the edge of the object you're trying to extract, and Photoshop's Refine Edge will do its best to adjust your selection based upon the edge that you paint. You can make the brush a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller just by using your left and right bracket keys right there next to the letter P on your keyboard. Now, I should point out, one of the best things about this tool is, well, one of the best things and one of the worst things is the fact that you can quickly go in and make a huge brush and cover a lot of area. But the problem with that is, and you're going to be tempted to do this, the problem with it is when you go ahead and paint, what you're telling Photoshop is, hey, look all the way out here as well as way in here on the hair for you know edge selection to you know to to factor into the decision you're making for this tiny little edge we need to select. So it's going to give us some crazy haloing. It's going to select a bunch of the white and it's going to make a lot of the hair in here semi-transparent, which we don't want. All this hair in here should come through at 100% opacity. There's no background that's bleeding through uh, in her hair. Let me make my brush a little bit smaller. In her hair, you know, back in here. The edge is over here. So the temptation with the brush tool is to use a huge brush. My tip here is use a small brush. So we're going to use a small brush and we're just going to paint over the edge that we want. And I also just try to do like little chunks at a time. Make my brush just a little bit larger here. 
There we go. I'm going to paint over the hair there. And Photoshop should kind of detect. You can see how it really cleaned that edge up a lot. Now we've got a bunch of uh, background coming through in here. So I'm going to paint where I know the hair is, see if we can get rid of some of that in the middle. You can see it, it sort of lightened it up a little bit. Let's paint over this hair out here. See if we can pick that hair up. That'd be great. Uh, let's paint out over the hair here. This is all edge stuff, right? Just like that. And the beauty of this tool is, you know, if there's an area that needs a lot of, we need to kind of make our, or tell Photoshop, look over a wider area, we can paint a very wide swath, you know, like that. Now I'm going to just undo that because it's going to foul up our, our selection in other ways. All right, now I'm going to come down here along the shirt. There we go, and just drop that into there. I'll do the shirt on the other side as well. Again, this brush is probably a little bit too big for the edge of the shirt, and you can kind of see the edge of the shirt, we, we did more damage to the edge of that selection than good. So I'm going to hit Command or Control Z to undo that. Now I'm just going to paint over this piece of hair. There we go. Let me make the brush just a little bit smaller. I'm going to paint over the hair here. And I'm also going to paint over the hair in there, even though it's kind of solid red. Because we just want to, we want that the background to drop away where it's background and not hair. All right, we're going to go over the hair up here. So we're doing a lot of work here to the edge of our selection. We're going to try to pick up some of the frizzies out here, right? Just tell Photoshop, that's that's the real edge, right in there, that stuff. Determine the edge of my selection based on the area I painted over. Now, if you paint over an area and you mess it up, you can always use the Erase Refinements tool, and it just erases and resets that little portion of the edge of uh, your refined edge selection. Now, now that we've done that, we can, well, let's just throw it on a black background and see what we've got. You can see there's a lot of background coming through. Really, my opinion, doesn't look good. Now, if we just transfer her over to another light background, it's probably not going to be an issue because the light pixels that are sort of showing through that light color mat is going to blend with the new background very well. But if we're taking her to a dark background, it's not going to look that good because all of this light stuff on the edge of her head, like it's doing against this black background, it's going to contrast. It's going to stick out. Um, we can try looking at her on a white background. It's going to look a little bit better, but still not that great. Let's go back to the black background. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try adjusting the edge a little bit. So let's increase the contrast a little bit. Increasing the contrast, if I crank it way up, it really just gives you a really sharp edge to your selection. My opinion, not the greatest look. I like to increase contrast a little bit. It just gives, uh, it, it sort of ensures that I don't have just this artificial softness at the edge of my selection, uh, which is exactly what Feather does. And one of the reason I, one of the reasons I don't like to use Feather uh, here in Adjust Edge, or in a very, very rare cases, I use Feather. You can also shift the entire edge of the selection. By dragging this to the left, you shift your selection inward, and you can see actually we're getting rid of a lot of that light stuff, but we're also losing a lot of the frizzy hair as well, and it's starting to look kind of fake. So negative 60 is too much. You can also push your edge outward, um, but you can see that's just going to give us even more of that light stuff. We want to reduce or shift the edge of our selection inward a little bit, um, and just get rid of as much of the light background as possible while preserving absolutely as much of the hair as we can. So like negative 15 looks good. We can also choose to decontaminate the color and decontaminating colors is going to take the those sort of color mat or the color mat that's coming through and and contaminating the color on the edge of our selection theoretically it's going to knock that out and sort of neutralize it and allow it to blend with whatever our new background is going to be um, as you can see it does an okay job but we still have massive bits of color uh, that are showing through we're also going to output this to a new layer with layer mask in my opinion that's just the selection to use in this case uh, let's go ahead and hit ok and you can see we have a new layer with a layer mask let's try dragging her over to this new background uh, she's no longer a redhead she is now a literary redhead there we go and you can see when we get her into library that was a Awful joke, by the way. Awful joke. Uh, once we get her into the library, you can see we still have a lot of work to do on the edge of the selection. And also, I mean, really, the library, let's just convert it to a smart object real quick. This really should have some serious blur going on back here. Um, and not really Gaussian blur even. It should be more like a whatever's going to make it look like a more realistic lens blur. Um, and there we go. We've we've kind of blurred the background just to sort of make it work. But she needs a lot of color work as well. But a couple things we can do here with the selection. First of all, if we select the mask, we can go grab the brush tool. Change the mode of the brush tool to soft light or overlay. Right click. Let's make the brush a little bit larger. Eh, a little bit larger even. There we go. Something like that. And if we paint with white... Well, actually, no, it's, if we paint with black, if I alt-click my mask here, you can see we have all this black stuff out here, and you can see where the haloing is coming from, right? We got this stuff in here. Because my brush is set to the blend mode of soft light, when I paint, 
it's only going to kind of target stuff that is uh, already got black mixing with it. See, I can paint over the white all day long, but because the blend mode is soft light, it's not going to do any damage. So I can come into here and in theory get rid of some of that haloing. Let's alt click on our mask again to get out of the alpha channel and see, and, and you can see part of the problem with this uh, particularly with the selection is we're starting to almost get that effect like we got when we cranked up the contrast slider in the refine edge uh, command. So while we are very well intentioned going in and trying to get rid of this extra color that's in there, we're actually doing a lot of damage still. And this is with a very difficult selection like this, this is where um, I feel that the refine edge just does not do nearly the kind of job that it should, especially when you have that refine edge brush at your disposal. So extremely powerful feature, but still kind of lacking in that department. Let's look at another image here. We've got this little fox. He's got a lot of spiky hair. I have a quick selection here. Uh, so I'm going to just command or control click that, uh, that channel. I'm going to shut the channel off. I'm going to choose my RGB composite channel again. I'm going to go over to my layers panel and let's go again, select refine edge. Now we've got him showing up over the black. Let's hit the letter F. No, not the letter F, the letter V, I'm sorry, to go to the overlay view mode. And you can see we have all these little spikies of hair coming off the side of the fox. I'm not really concerned with getting a great selection down here. I'm more focused on the difficult stuff here. You, you literally can't make this selection with a pen tool, with a lasso tool. Uh, there's just too many levels of varying opacity and all kinds of other things. This should be a a beautiful example for the refine edge tool. So let's turn on smart radius. We're going to crank the radius up, maybe like 20. See what that looks like. Maybe a little bit more than 20. Something like that. Maybe bring it back just a little bit. Something around 40. Let's roll with 40. And then we're going to go in with the refine radius tool. And we're going to try to uh, really make sure we pick up all this stuff here on the edge. Again, I'm resisting the temptation to make my brush really big. And I'm just going to you know, paint wider with it if need be. Right? We're just telling Photoshop, look, start here with the refine edge and extend it all the way out to here, out to the edges of these hairs. That's what I want you to do. I want you to find all that foxy hair. That's right. Yeah. Look at that. Cool. You can get that. Now, Refine Edge is going to do an awful job of picking up this dark edge. Pretty much any selection technique would. We're probably going to have to go in manually with a brush and pick that up. Let's make sure we're getting the hair here uh, between his ears, or the fur, I should say, between his ears. And then over here on the side of his ear. Oh, you can see what that did. That actually made that worse. Why? Probably because the brush needs to be smaller. Eh, something like that. Still, it's okay now. Still not as great as I would like it to be. And then let's just go down his back this way. This all looks pretty good, but just to make sure we're kind of getting something good here. Let's go over that and see what it looks like. And that looks pretty decent. All right, let's uh, go ahead and decontaminate color here as well. Let's move him over a black background. His ears are going to be a little funky. You can see actually over the white background, the ears are kind of funky. But look at the detail we're getting. Now, Refine Edge is doing an amazing job here. Let's decontaminate the color even more. Uh, whoop, too much. So decontaminate color in this case, it's going to start to kind of make some of his fur transparent. We don't want that. Notice if I crank it up to 100, we're going to lose something coming back into his fur. So that's just too much. we got to scale it back. Something between 15 and 20 is probably going to be better. We can increase the contrast a little bit, try to bring back some of the crispness, and even just shift the edge back. Oh, nope, not a little bit. No, we'll probably, we, we won't adjust the edge at all. And then we're going to output this to a new layer with layer mask. Go ahead and hit OK. And we've got our fox up on that layer. Now, if I alt click or option click on this mask, you can see we do still have some issues up here. There's some stuff happening up off of his ear and above the fur right between his ears. We can adjust all of that just like we did before with a brush tool. I'm not going to get into that, though. Let's try dragging him to a new uh, layer. Here we go. We've got this. Again, he's no longer a fox. He's now a literary fox. I'm going to make him a little bit larger. All right, and we're scaling him much bigger than he was in his original image. But you can see Refine Edge did a pretty remarkable job. I mean, we're going to want to come in here and just touch up some of this stuff in here maybe. Oh, no, actually, that was I went the wrong way with that. Let's shut uh, or change our blend mode to normal, make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to paint with white. Let's just bring back some of that. Uh, if I right-click, I'm just reducing the hardness of my brush a little bit. Let's bring back some of his cheek there. You want to be careful. See how we kind of have that hard edge now? It looks just kind of crappy. So you want to be careful when you're doing that. So really not that bad. We would come in manually and bring back the the, the black tips of his ears, those, the dark color on the tips of his ears. We get rid of the grass manually, things like that. But in this case, you can see Refine Edge relatively quickly did a really, really nice job. But what do we have? We have hair that's really sharply in focus 
and it's relatively speaking over a background color that's a lot darker than the subject, so it's going to be a little bit easier to pick up. But hey, you know, no excuses. Refine Edge did a killer job on something like this. So this is where it just takes using Refine Edge. The more you use Refine Edge, the more you understand all those little features in uh, the Refine Edge. Uh, dialog box, the more you're going to understand how Refine Edge works and kind of when you can use it and when it's just not so good to use it. And one last little tip I want to leave you with. I'm going to get out of Refine Edge here. I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key to select this mask and I'm going to fill these two little areas to the side with black. Uh, uh, that's Option Delete, Alt Backspace because my foreground color is set to black. Commander Control D to deselect. Now if we zoom in, we do have some bits of the background that are technically showing through but they just so happen to match up nicely with the the background. If we wanted to be a little bit more picky and clean that up, we could select the mask, hit Command or Control L because it's all black now, and we can grab the black slider and just intensify the blacks a little bit. And you can see, just watch that edge very subtly, and even between his ears up there, we just kind of fade some of that stuff. Whoop! I got to grab the black slider. I can grab, there we go. We just kind of fade some of that stuff right away. You want to be careful though because if you go too far, you get a bad, crunchy, crispy look. We do still want some color matte, but in this case, we're just cleaning up that edge. You can see how much of that additional junk just gets taken away, and maybe that's even a little bit too much. And then go ahead and hit OK. So, that's it for the Refine Edge tool in Photoshop. I hope you've loved it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Wait, stop. Don't go anywhere yet. Before you click away, make sure you crush that like button down there and also hit the button on the screen to subscribe to my channel because you're not going to find anything like this online anywhere. And while you're at it, head over to tutvid.com. Use the link here in the video, in fact. Sign up for my newsletter. You're going to get 30 free time-saving tips in Photoshop. It's an amazing video and PDF that will automatically be sent to you when you sign up for my newsletter. And you can also follow me on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, you name it. I'm there. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. I'm out of here.